Hello, fellow Scratchers! Question. How do we detect the colour of a pixel in Scratch? Now, sure, if we know the colour we are looking for, we can just ask Scratch directly. Using a tiny costume as a colour detector, position it at the mouse pointer when the space is pressed, and then if we are touching the exact orange colour, we say orange. Otherwise, meh. Excellent. That works a treat, and we can extend it to add in many more colours. But what if we do not know what colours to expect? Did you know that Scratch can display over 16 million unique colours? I don't suppose you fancy adding an if check for each and every one, right? No, me neither. But there are times when we could really do with being able to do this. Like if I wanted to pick a colour from an image and draw with it. We'll be coding that up later today. Or if you want to scan and manipulate not a single pixel of colour, but an entire screen? Now things start to get wild. Just wait until episode 2 where I will show you some amazing new ideas that have recently revolutionised full screen image scanning in Scratch. It's mind blowing, but we must start simple. Are you ready for this? Great, let's get scratching. So a little bit of red, green, blue colour theory. Take a look at this little pen project. Feel free to copy it and have a play. I'll put a link to it in the video description. You'll see we have these three sliders, one for each of the red, green, and blue colour values. Now, when mixed together, we can create any one of the 16 million different colours that Scratch is capable of displaying. You'll see the maths expression for calculating the combined colour value is given here. We add together the three values of red, green, and blue but ensure to first multiply red by 65,536. That happens to be 256 squared. And green by 256. And the blue stays as it is. Once summed, the resultant colour value can be used in the set pen colour block, as we have here. Or, as it happens, in a touching colour block too. And that is going to be very handy indeed. So, back to our colour detection project. We have this tiny sprite, its costume is just a simple 2x2 two two pixel square, centred on the drawing canvas. When the space key is pressed, this tiny costume goes to the mouse pointer, ready to check for touching colours. Now we can use an if touching colour block, but instead of using the colour picker to choose the colour, we can create a new variable named colour, for this sprite only and drop it right into the touching colour block like that. Funky! We start by setting this colour to zero, and then use a repeat loop to cycle through all possible colours. 16 million, right? But we need to be accurate here. Multiply together the 256 shades of red with the 256 shades of green and the 256 shades of blue. Gosh, yes, 16,777,216 colours to test against. Wow. Well, here goes nothing. Drop in the touching colour check. And each time around this loop, we change colour by one, so as to keep trying the next colour. That's the loop sorted. Let's drop in a say block for when we find the matching colour. Why not just say the colour value for now? And to finish it off, we stop this script. There's no point continuing this huge loop if the desired colour has already been found. Okay, shall we give this a test? Mouse over the red hat and press space. And it's off. You can see the colour variable simply flying through the possible colour values. Nothing is matched yet. Okay, I'm skipping the video forwards. And there, success! This was colour value uh, 15,738,896. <laughs> and it took Scratch a whole 59 seconds to find it. Gotta say, I'm very pleased we did find the colour, but a little disappointed at how long it took. But gosh, what could we do to speed this up? Well, knowing how Scratch's colour detection works can guide us to some sweet optimizations. It turns out that although Scratch can display 16 million colours, 
it cannot actually detect all 16 million of them at all. It's not that sensitive. Therefore, testing every colour is actually wasteful and unnecessary. To show this, you'll find that we can still detect every colour even if we skip along by 16 at a time. Let's give that a go. Trying a green. Oh wow! Did you see how fast that was? Perhaps I was lucky with the colour. Try again with a bright red. Okay, yeah. Do you think that was like four seconds? <laughs> Whatever it was, it was much faster than the full minute it took last time. So skipping is good for us. So with that initial success, and before we go any further, let's make our scripts a little more official. Make a new custom block, naming it get color, and make sure to tick the run without screen refresh box. We'll drop everything from the set color block under the new define script, and drop the new get color block from where they came. Splendid. And now that we are getting colour values back from our get colour script, it would be nice to be able to see the colour that we've picked. We can do this by enabling the pen extension. Usefully, the set pen colour block accepts the same colour values as the touching colour block, so we drop that variable in here to match the found colour. So we can set the pen size to 50. I want to draw a circle at the top right of the screen using the picked colour. Go to x of 210 and a y of 150 should be good. Then we pen down to draw and straight away pen up. So if I click the script, there, there we go, it's drawn in the colour we last picked. And since we can now see that colour, we don't need this say block any longer. Whoops, don't forget to join up these scripts. And then let's give that a test. Ah, oh, super cool. We can click around and yeah, the colours are definitely the right ones. It's nice to be able to confirm that now. So back to our get colour script. When we skip by 16 here, what we are doing is actually skipping just the blue colour channel. But the green and red channels are just as viable for skipping, so I'm really positive we can get this running faster still. But skipping the other channels is not quite so straightforward to explain, without perhaps starting this script over again. So, create three new variables. Red, for this sprite only. Green, for this sprite only. And blue, also for this sprite only. We begin by setting red to zero. And then we're going to loop through all 256 values of red, with a change red by 1. Cool. We can do the same for green. And again for blue. Great. So let's put these together. Begin with the red outer loop. Then the green loop goes inside, but above the change red block. And blue inside that, again above the change green block. A loop within a loop within a loop. If we run that, we can see Scratch blasting through all possible values of red, green and blue, and this will be once more cycling through all 16.7 million combinations of the three colours. But the colour variable is not yet being calculated. We need this for our colour checks, so we need that colour maths. Start by setting colour to blue. To this we then add green multiplied by 256. And lastly, to that we add the red variable multiplied by 256 multiplied by 256. That's 256 squared, or 65,536, if you like. And that's it. That will give us our colour value. So this will test the colour as it was before. But note, we were previously skipping by 16, and now we've gone back to adding only one to our blue variable. 
So this is why I said previously we were only skipping blue values. Blue is the innermost colour in this loop. Once again then, we should change blue by 16. And of course, if we are skipping by 16 each time, we don't want to be repeating 256 times any longer. Work out how many times to repeat by by dividing this 206 by the skip value, 16. And safely drop the detection script in before we change blue. Cool. Let's run the project. Now pressing space on a red colour and we wait. See the red, green and blue variables spinning? And there we found the colour. And you can certainly see it as expected that the red component of the colour is much greater than the blue and green channels. Sweet. Let's try it on blue. Wow, blue is always a lot quicker, isn't it? It's also nice seeing the colour breakdowns. So now that we have split apart the different colour channels, it's easier to put in the separate skips for each of the different colours. I have a good feeling that this will really speed things up. So I'm going to put in a stopwatch timer so that we can tell exactly how long it's taken. Just reset timer when key is pressed, and then with a new variable, time, set time to timer at the end. Let's just confirm the speed for the colour red. Yeah, four and a half seconds. So can we beat this by adding further skips? Come down to the bottom of the get colour script. So simple now. We just need to change these two skips. But be careful, unlike the blue channel, the red and green skips must be set to eight. Scratch is a little more sensitive to these colours than the blue, as it turns out. And we scroll back up and adjust the repeat loops. These are now both 256 divided by eight skips. Yeah, excited to give this a try. So can this beat a time of four and a half seconds? I'll press space on red and we wait for it. Wait, hold on. Wait, it's already finished. I, I think I actually missed it. The time is reading zero. What the? This is outrageous. Now, don't get too excited. This doesn't necessarily mean that it's running instantaneously. It is still taking some time. Only the timer reporter is not detailed enough to give us the real speed readout. However, wow, it is so much faster than before, right? So cool. Right then, um, let's talk further optimizations, I guess. Everything we do in Scratch takes a little time, so these divisions we can simplify. 256 divided by 8 is 32. Same for this one. And 256 divided by 16 is 16. Then we have a 256 multiplied by 256 here. That ends up being 65,536. <laughs> Gotta be careful to put the right number in there. 65536. Now you may have already thought using the change colour by blocks here wasn't that efficient. We can replace these with additions. The only reason I code them like this is to prevent my lines getting too long. We'll need two new additions. And then colour is red multiplied by that 65,536. And then the green is multiplied by 256. And then finally we add on the blue. So that's a little long, but not too bad I guess. Stuff it back into the main script. There, so that's a little neater, but I suspect it won't make it a whole lot faster. To get this as fast as possible, perhaps we could rearrange these loops to avoid having to do all this maths in the first place. It may not be quite so obvious what it's doing, but it's worth seeing. So we'll go back to resetting the colour variable at the top of this script. Next, we bring in each of the three loops a repeat. 32, another repeat 32, and a repeat 16. Then the colour check comes next, but instead of changing the blue variable, we are going right back to changing the colour variable again. This is again by 16. So as we now know, this will be updating the blueness of the colour. Now to be able to skip greens, we will change colour by and because greens are multiplied by 256, this would be the skip value of 8 multiplied by 256. Except 
we've already changed colour by 16 sixteenths. That's 256 already. So taking that into account, we only move on by 7 256s. Splendid. We can do just the same for the red channel too. Change colour by 7 multiplied by 65,536. If we test that now. Yeah, that works just as well. And it's far more concise a script without the need for any of the red, green, and blue variables. Pretty neat. So that is our completed script. It's perfect for coding up paint packages. I'll quickly add some painting scripts now, in fact, just to show you what I mean. We'll just have a uh, when green flag clicked, forever loop, waiting for the mouse down, and then we'll set the pen colour to the colour, yep. Set the pen size, and then pen down. We are drawing. We will now repeat until the mouse is no longer down. And keep moving the mouse around to draw the lines. Then, after the mouse button is released, we pen up. Just before we test this though, you may want to stuff a hide block at the top here to avoid accidentally dragging this sprite around the stage. Anyhow, let's test full screen for now. Here we go. I can paint in the current pen colour. And then pressing a space on a red colour. And now I can draw in red. Yay! And blue. Yep, any colour we can see, we can paint with. Kinda means we can touch up a photo by using our colour matching like this. It's very fun, very fun indeed. Why don't you drop me a comment under the video to let me know what you could imagine doing with this get colour block. Better still, if you create something awesome, then there's a Scratch Studio linked under the video description. Please comment your project in there and then we can all enjoy seeing what you have made. So fun. Sadly, that is where I need to finish this episode. Now that we have a working colour detector, we are all set to begin looking at image scanning. Taking the colour of every pixel on the screen and storing it for use later on. The problem is, image scanning requires us to detect the colour of every pixel on the stage, and that's 172,000 screen pixels. So even a fast colour detector like this one will take a long, long time to scan the whole screen. But fear not, we have some amazingly clever scripting ahead of us that will make scanning so much faster you will not believe it. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode. It was really just a grounding, and as I say, the real fun is yet to come. But if you're excited for part two, then smash that like button and subscribe. And why not click that bell icon so you don't miss the next episode the moment it comes out. If, like many other scratchers, you just can't wait to see what's next, then you can join the Early Access Channel membership. There's all sorts of perks to be had, and we'd love to have you on board with us. Okay, that's it from me today. I hope you have a great week ahead, and scratch on, guys. Bye.